Hey, what's up? Puffin Forest here. This is a video from a raw game I played with two other D&D animators, Dingo from Dingo Doodles and Z Bishu, who makes the animated spellbook. I'll put the links to their channel in the description of this video. They do amazing content and I would highly recommend their work. After we had that round table between the three of us, all of us got a flood of messages from people asking that we play D&D. So here it is. We did it. Now you guys can stop messaging us about it. <laughs> but really, it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate Dingo and Z for making the time for it. Thanks to Felix, who volunteered to run the game. It was his first time running 5e, and he did a great job. We split the game into two parts. This is part one on my channel, and part two is up on Dingo's channel. That's the intro. Hope you guys enjoy. So this is our, our first 5e game for Felix and I. Yep. Yeah, look, you're gonna... Uh... You're gonna maybe like it. <laughs> I, you know what? I going through the stats and like making the character sheet, I can see why people go towards this version because it's yeah. nice and simple, and it's yeah. just it's much yeah more. Simple. And the three point five that we play is so heavily homebrewed. It's more similar to five than three point five. That's at this true. Point. That's true. It's more like yeah. a three point five five version. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, Felix is the DM of uh, the Fool's Gold campaign that I am animating currently, slowly, on mm -hmm. my channel, which is Dingo Doodles. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, let's have some fun. Yeah, all right. Awesome. We should first um, describe our characters. Yeah, did you, do we want to do the descriptions right away? Yeah, like, we should introduce our characters. Who wants to go first? Uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Um, I'll go first. Hello. I'll go first. <laughs> All right. Uh, my character is named Kali, and uh, like cauliflower, because I name a lot of my characters after food and weird sounds. Uh, and she is from the Underdark and is a drow. And she is a cleric of Pelor. And her origin is she kind of got tired of the Underdark and all their shenanigans and all their you know, murdering each other all the time. So she came up to the surface, uh, looked a little too long in the sun, and now has big old round glasses because <laughs> <laughs> she messed up her eyesight. And uh, she wears uh, like a powder blue tunic, uh, chain mail, and she uses a morning star mace. Oh, cool. And she wears a wizard hat because she secretly wanted to be a wizard, but she didn't have the smarts for it. <laughs> she, couldn't, she couldn't get it. So she wears a wizard hat, secretly wanting to become a wizard, and she's a huge fan of worldwide wizard wrestling, which is WWW, or <laughs> So that's her little secret, is that she's super into wizard wrestling. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Nice. Okay, who's next? All right, so uh, I'll step up. Uh, so my character is Zebo Zabraf, and uh, he was a longtime entertainer and traveler and uh, would tell stories, and he eventually came to the light of Palor and has uh, kind of stumbled in with uh, the, re the local church and is going around uh, trying to do some good in the world. And that is, he is a gnome, by the way, as well. He's very flamboyant, uh, still has kind of that entertainer background. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Because <laughs> all my characters, all my characters, for some reason, don't like gnomes. And it's just been a standard joke throughout my entire... I'm sure we're going to get along great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not really sure about that. Um, also, she has a southern accent, so you all Great. have to get used to that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, so uh, I am Z Bashu, uh, and I am playing Helgmos Um uh, He is somebody who tends to the the gardens of, of uh, the temple to Pelor and wherever we are. Um, and he is a old dwarf um, and uh, botanist and researcher uh, who kind of thinks that like you know you can see the face of Paylor in every plant in in nature itself you know what I mean so that's his that's his deal <laughs> <laughs> Kali like goes up to a flower and like picks one and is like oops oh no <laughs> I done killed Paylor 
<laughs> My honeysuckle. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I'll try to put it back. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's on the ground now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it actually has many curative properties. <laughs> mm. um. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's funny because now I'm thinking Holly's just surrounded by two short guys. <laughs> <laughs> just He's, like, yachts. taller than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. How tall is Holly? Uh, well, no, she's, like, a standard, you okay. know? She's, like, uh, five foot... Uh, eight yeah. actually she's a little more on the taller side mm-hmm. but um, I'm just thinking where she's just like all right let's let's go fight evil and <laughs> like these two little guys let's go, next to let's go let go my children <laughs> my children yeah. are pay lower <laughs> like oh I'm the parent <laughs> like you must be <laughs> yeah. this taller right? even though she's like well actually I, I don't know how old she is but she, like Drows do live quite a long time, so they're like seven hundred and fifty something years like that. they can go up to. So uh yeah, she's yeah. she's probably on the two hundreds side, so mm-hmm. yeah. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're shorter than me. <laughs> Take precedent. Time has compressed my spine. <laughs> <laughs> uh I used to be five foot. <laughs> well, I mean you're doing fine with what you got. Thank, thank you for your kind words. Pale or praise you. <laughs> Pale or praise you. <laughs> and to you as well. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself as well. But uh, I'm Felix. Like I said, you. I hosted the uh, Fool's Gold campaign. My first ever 5e game now. And I am playing everything else. <laughs> my character is the world and everything in it (laughs) pretty much (laughs) all right so let's dive into this so you guys i'll just refer to you guys as the party uh you guys have been traveling together for about a week now to a small mountain town named Bergheim, and your presence has been requested at the town by the mayor to give paylor's blessing to this town's celebration called Lantern's Eve. Your travels have been fairly safe, if really cold, (laughs) and you have actually arrived at the town kind of the, like the morning of the celebration taking place. And uh, you were accommodated by the townspeople in a local inn, which is just a quaint little, little inn with like four rooms at most. And uh, you have been hosted by the inn's owner, a sweet old lady named Mrs. Broadbottom. And I love her. <laughs> and um, you're currently just hanging out the, at the inn. You are about it's, to... S- it's Broad Bottom? Broad Bottom. Broad Bottom. <laughs> broad Bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Might I ask her race? Uh, she is a human. And uh, she's Damn. definitely in her probably like 70s or 80s, but uh, she's a sweet old grandma. And uh, after chilling at the inn for a little while, you have actually um, been called by her to join her for dinner before you are picked up for tonight's celebrations. Mm, lovely. Thank you. Dinner. That would be fabulous. I would absolutely adore that. Tiny old lady. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, just just have a seat wherever you like. Just make yourself at home, make yourself cozy, I'll bring the food right out. And she's actually brought you to her little uh, dining room, which is just a large table. Uh, there's, a, there's a fireplace on the side, everything is decorated uh, for the holiday spirit. It's just a, it's a really cozy place to be right now. Her voice is like a song. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, like, sheets or uh, some, like, clothes or something and put them onto my chair so that way I have a little bit extra height. So that way I'm <laughs> okay. at yeah. high level with everyone there. And, <laughs> and and as that's happening, like, just, like, behind him in the shot, I'm sort of, like, ups daisying like, toddler-style half-body getting out of a pool getting onto these chairs. <laughs> <laughs> You you want you want some you want some help and I just kind of like put my hands hovering underneath you. <laughs> you all right? Thank thank you. Okay. Thank you. I I will repay this. Oh, you no, I don't need like a blood oath. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just put you on the chair. It's fine. 
I always pay my debts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so suddenly, Heldmos is like really just it gets very sinister. Turns out to be a warlock instead. <laughs> just like. Yeah. Uh, shortly after, you all find your place. Uh, in mm-hmm. walks Miss Broadbottom from the kitchen, along with a, a young girl, also human. And they set the table. It seems like a delicious turkey dinner. There's mashed potatoes, there's veggies, everything belonging in a you know, nice holiday dinner. Mm. And uh, she says, well, you, you all enjoy this food. And um, I'd like you to meet my niece. Uh, this is Neela. Neela, why don't you introduce yourself? And Neela is just kind of awkwardly on the spot. She's like, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, hi. Mm, uh. Aren't you precious? <laughs> and she just sits down at the table. Zebo Zabraf, and I take off my hat, and or actually my hat was already off because we're inside, but I would kind of give a bow. Do you follow in the in the light of Palor? I go up really intense to her. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, um, I, uh... <clears throat> I start coughing and hoping that Callie gets the the message. <laughs> <clears throat> um. No, I'm just I'm you know I'm making sure. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just kind of a, a free spirit. It is important to you, dear. Um, yeah, sure. I, I follow Paylor, I guess. You don't seem to have much, you know, faith there. Oh, wow. These uh, potatoes, they're just delicious. Seem kind of unsure. <laughs> oh, I thank you, dear. I really put all my heart and love into those. Yeah. All right. And then I just, like, um, sit back and just start eating. All right, so <laughs> yeah, so so like he sort of he he holds up he holds up a, a hand. I'd like to just get a little insight on these on these people. Okay. How how closely do they seem to be watching us eating? Um, like I don't take a bite yet. I am in fact eating. <laughs> I mean, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Neela just dived straight into her food, and uh, Miss Broadbottom okay. did take a couple bites, but she's definitely looking at you guys expectantly, like somebody made a delicious meal and wants to hear if you guys like it or not. So standard mm. grandma. Yeah, it's I guess it's the it's a mixture of do you guys love it and do you taste the poison? <laughs> I'm not saying there's poison oh. in it. But, uh, <laughs> it could be interpreted as either or. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, a cautious man by nature. Uh, Helmos like takes out uh, takes out a yew leaf and starts to sort of just shake it a little bit above the pa- <laughs> above his plate okay. and detects poison. I I have this funny image in my head of my characters like oh I got something caught in my teeth and I pull it out it's a bottle of poison and I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, still capped. I kind of I kind of like push my plate over to Gelmos and be like can you. Can you bless my stuff too? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a- absolutely. It, it is a ten-minute prayer, and, and often done at our temple, <laughs> is it not, my fellows? And so, yeah, I guess I'll. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> I'll. Ra- I guess I'll ritual cast it. So he starts like. He starts like shaking the lead around and and. Detect a poison. Detect a poison. Detect a poison. Detect a poison. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. It's just a common ritual. Collie's just thinking like, um, that food's gonna be so cold by the time I eat it. Um. Both Neela and Miss Broadbottom kind of stare at you guys questioningly as the food gets cold before their very eyes. Uh, but you are thoroughly oh, no. convinced that this food is not poisoned. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> By the time they finish the ritual, I'm like, oh, whoo, and I'm like leaning back my chair. That was, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like picking my teeth with a bone. Well, I can certainly see why they brought the, the three of you to this festival. I mean, you seem like a, like a heartworking Paylor bunch, don't you? My character, when she says working, uh, my character flinches at that word. <laughs> <laughs> I slowly turn to you and go, uh, yes, we are very dedicated to uh, Lord Paylor uh, and all his blessings and his light. Paylor's blessings. Well, I'm sure the mayor is going to be happy to see you. You should be here pretty shortly. Yes. You better finish your food soon before he comes and picks you up for the festival. I'm going to eat my cold food now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, I start digging in and... May Tefo smile upon you. And, and just like get, get stuck in this food. <laughs> so it's just a nice dinner after that point, And uh, you all finish your food. It was just quite delicious. You're not poisoned. Nobody's dead. You're all good. Not too long afterwards, you hear a knock on the door. 
And Mr. Mrs. Broadbottom uh, stands up and says, "Oh, Dad, um, that must be the mayor. I'll be I'll be right back to check on that." And it's just, now it's just the three of you with Neela sitting there, the young little girl, and she's kind of intimidated looking at the three of you. Because I should specify this girl is maybe like seven or eight. Oh, okay. That that makes sense why she was freaked out by our level of intensity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to ask her. Okay. Um, I, I go up to her and I go. Um, so, N- Neela, uh, so what exactly is this festival of, uh, lanterns or so? Uh, yes, this is, it's the Lantern's Eve celebration. We do this every year. It's at the darkest night of the year. And we send up a bunch of lights and lanterns to light up the night to celebrate Paylor. Fabulous. <laughs> it sounds really nice. It's what, <laughs> yeah, it is really it nice. It sounds like a beautiful event. <laughs> <laughs> Just lately, we've, uh, you know, in the, in the past few years, some people have, like, they've gone missing during these festivals. And it's like, that's why we brought in some priests, because we want, like, a like a nice blessing, you know? Mm, we didn't hear about that. What? When was the when was the last festival? Last well, year? Yeah. The, I mean, last year we had a festival, and that's when my parents went missing. Oh. Your parents? That's why I've been staying with my grandma ever since. Uh, oh wow! Dang, girl! Oh, that is that is such a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> just like the festive air just goes like. Uh, Cold. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, don't worry. I mean, we're here to bless, and I know that Paylor will. Find, like we will help find your parents and yeah maybe maybe if we could find the people maybe we could bless them too ah. <laughs> and I'm like doing the fist into my hand <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they didn't believe in Palo or enough <laughs> maybe maybe they need a good ass blessing right now <laughs> <laughs> well that that sounds great I'm I'm so glad you guys are here <laughs> <laughs> all right oh dude that fucking got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to stay away from this depressing child at the moment. <laughs> well, uh, shortly after that, Mrs. Broadbottom returns and uh, walks walks in and says, uh, Well, everyone, that is indeed the mayor. Are you all ready to go now? I would say so. Well, what? Yeah. Oh, almost ready. Uh, child. Hmm? Yes? What, what were the names of your parents? Uh, the name of my parents parents were John and Jane. John and Jane? Mm Mm-hmm. John and Jane Broadbottom. Ah, yes. So this is your grandmother on your father's side. Oh, right. Yes. Wow. Beautiful names. Powerful names. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Thanks. Uh, They're nice people. (laughs) Very, yes, very unique. (laughs) Uh, Well, Miss Broadbottom pipes up again and says, "Uh, we really should get going now. We don't want to be late to the festival. Uh, yeah, okay, of course. We head out. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. We we bounce. And uh, you guys walk out to the uh, entrance of her house, um, and on your way to the door, she actually hands each of you a small little um, wrapped up box. Hmm. And she says, "Here's some cookies for the road, so you don't get hungry tonight." Oh, Hot damn! You, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> like as I'm like, oh, thank you, and she just barely sees me pull out the U leaf again <laughs> as I'm fucking. <laughs> And I just like slowly put the box towards you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you confirm once again that these cookies are not poisoned. Okay. <laughs> after ten minutes. After ten minutes. Yeah. Um, after ten minutes, uh, outside stands a very impatient mayor huh. in front of a horse-drawn sleigh, mm. and uh, the best way to describe what you see here, that this mayor. Is uh, he's dressed a little bit like Monopoly Man, as a bit of an uh, bit of an uh, bit of a hefty man, elven in nature, and uh, seems to be kind of like middle aged, and he certainly has the, the monocle and the top hat going, like he's he's all out Monopoly Man. Paylor's blessings have arrived, and when I step out, I do minor illusion, like power, like fla- um, petals and flowers, like fling with my fingers as we're coming up the road towards him. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Paylor's blessing be upon all of you. Oh yes, lovely to see you. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I punch it up with a little thaumaturgy. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at these idiots. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad the uh, clerics of Paylor that we hired are both powerful and flashy. It's great to see you. Will you not join me on the sleigh? Style is very important. <laughs> and we will proceed to the celebrations. Uh, yeah, let's let's get going. Yeah, and he like he opens the door to the uh, horse-drawn sleigh, and you guys can hop in if you like. Definitely hop in. And I, I do introduce myself as Zebo again. I okay. do the bow and everything. Pleasure to meet you. And what might the rest of you be called? I am Helmos Urson. I call him Mossy for short. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can call me Moss. <laughs> Ah, uh, and my name is Kali. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Mayor Royam. Really, a pleasure. And with that, he uh, hops in the sleigh and uh, uh, tells the uh, driver to get going. Um, now that you guys are outside, I'll kind of describe the town a little bit more. You can picture kind of like a quaint uh, mountain town, so the houses are built in a bit of an older, uh, old school fashion. Uh, there's definitely a thick layer of snow, hence the horse-drawn sleigh. The town is quite dark. You can see any and all lanterns and torches have been extinguished. It seems like that's in preparation for the festival. And uh, it's quite decked out, so think of like all the holiday decorations. There's ribbons and everything and trees around, so it's it's festive, it's beautiful. You also see lots of people in the street. Uh, they all seem to be heading the same way as you, but you're obviously outpacing them in your sled. Uh, when we're driving along, I would actually try to initiate a conversation about, uh, so, apparently I've been hearing rumors, something about missing people on the Lanterns Festival. Hmm? Oh yes, very, very unfortunate. We've had a couple of disappearances for the past couple of festivals. We're not quite sure what's causing it, but um, that's why we kind of brought in a, you know, the the elite, so to speak. Ah, oh, yes. When he says elite, like, I'm like, I put my hands on my uh, arm or arms up to my side. I'm like, oh, like the elite. <laughs> and then dazzle, <laughs> I flicker, throw some more petals. Well, your confidence speaks for itself, so I'm very glad that you are here. Uh, to tell you a bit about the festival itself, uh, there's just a small stage and the town will gather around. And uh, I will be holding just a short speech and before I will be turning it over to you to do a little a blessing for the town. And then uh, we will kind of uh, release our lanterns and light up the town and from there on it will be a lovely celebration. Is that alright with all of you? Yeah. Mm, yes. It, it, of course it is okay. I do have a few questions before we give our blessing. Yes. When did this tradition begin? Oh, well, as, as far as I can think back. I think this probably a hundred years or so by now. A hundred years? At least. Definitely before my time here as mayor. And he, he gives, he gives a, <laughs> he gives like a little bit of like a, hmm, and then uh, looks at, and looks at Kali like humans. Um, <laughs> yeah, only a hundred years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and, I'm, I'm sure that this has been covered by some of the other locals, but what does it symbolize? Well, it symbolizes the, um, our devotion and our blessing to Pelor. We worship Pelor here, uh, that we have a small little chapel. I think we are all of one faith here. And yeah, right. uh, we would, uh, <laughs> of course, like to appease Pelor and uh, have him light up the darkest night of the year. Oh, that's interesting. And the disappearance has only started in the past three years. From what we've heard, yes, only the past three years. Hmm. It's very unfortunate, as it tarnishes our celebrations. Yes, it is. Other than Hyom and Hyain, Broadbottom, who has disappeared? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I turned to Moss and I'm like... I'm double. I'm double checking my notes, and he he like brings up a little notebook, and it just says John and Jane Broadbottom on it. <laughs> well, uh, I'm assuming you're referring to John and Jane Broadbottom, and yes, they disappeared last year. And the years before, it seemed to be mostly um, single families, so a, like a husband and wife that would disappear. Um, but not the child. I don't have any recollection of uh, missing children. No. And. Did each of them have children? Yes, all of them had children that they left behind, which unfortunately had to then stay with their grandparents. Bless them. Interesting. That's all I, I have to ask. All right. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Thank you again for being here. We really appreciate this. Ah, no problem. I love the monocle, by the oh, way. Of course. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I very much cherish it. Moss, do you want a monocle? Are we, are, do, did you want one? 
I, I, I cannot afford such a thing. Uh, maybe as a present I'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, please, allow oh, me. Thank- and the guy, re- uh, Mayor Royum, reaches into his coat pocket and pulls out another monocle. <laughs> And says, here, as a sign of good faith and celebrations, please take this monocle. And it's just a nice golden monocle. Oh, in the spirit of the holiday, I suppose I could. <laughs> Thank you. And he, he, takes, he takes the monocle and immediately inserts it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You've been monocled. Thank that you. Cursed monocle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, suddenly you just explode. Yeah, I like. You've gone blind. <laughs> the monocle's poisoned. Yeah, are you just gonna wave your little leaf over top of the monocle before you put it on? Fanning in your face. Uh, no, I, he's too. He's too excited. GM's notes. Step one: Have players ask for monocles. Step two: Poison <laughs> monocle. <laughs> yeah. And now you have arrived in the town's plaza. Uh, there's already a lot of people here. You can see that uh, most of them are holding uh, paper lanterns in their hands. The sleigh uh, rides up to the stage. You all hop off and uh, walk onto a small wooden stage. Behind you is probably like a 20 foot tall decorated pine tree. Like it's gorgeous looking. And as soon as the mayor with you steps up on the stage, uh, everybody quiets down a little bit and is paying attention uh, to all of you. Uh, is there anything you want to do, or do you want to let the mayor speak? We're just uh, gonna. I mean, just let the. Okay. Yeah, wait sure. for our mm-hmm. cue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just giving you opportunity to embarrass people. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you know what though? There is a big crowd, right? I am gonna keep an eye on like kind of the perimeter of the crowd, just in case someone gets nabbed. Okay, for sure. So for me, um, what I would probably do is try and initiate some conversation, some casual conversation with people. Like, yes, it's a lovely after evening. We're going to be having this performance, blah, blah, blah. We're here to help, blah, blah, blah. And then I would try and be getting information on what time, if there was any time that the people went missing. On okay. stage? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're on stage, so I guess I can't. Well, well, <laughs> I mean, you can just shout out to the crowd. I mean, you can talk off to people right by the stage. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just be, you're being like a hype man. <laughs> Who's excited and not? Someone tell me about these missing no, no, people. Sorry, it's, uh, sorry, I forgot. I was thinking... I was thinking, like, oh, we might have a little bit of time before then or something like that. You do. But I'm like, oh, yep. never mind. No, we, we're immediately on there. So no, this, you, is, you this have is something to do later. <laughs> um, this is something to do later. <laughs> you do have a moment if you'd like to do the investi- investigation. Okay, just kind of ask around and, and try and figure out. Or even maybe even I would just talk with the mayor just quietly, like, what time? If, if anyone knew anything about the time that they got nabbed. Right. Um, would that be an investigation role? Um, yeah, sure. I, I think that could work, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 18. Oh, all right. Um, you just scan through the crowd and strike up some small conversations uh, to get to, gather some information. And you find out that all of them seem to be going missing right around the height of the festival. So right when the um, the speech is concluded, like everybody is, they sent they've sent up their uh, you know their lanterns. The, the town is lit up. It's like shortly after that moment, people seem to go missing from what okay. people recall. And mm. a lot of people seem like they don't want to talk about it because it's kind of like against the holiday spirit. But yeah, uh, yeah they share information with you because I guess you just seem like a, a guy to be uh, mellow with. Approachable, <laughs> Approachable no. and trustworthy. <laughs> and I guess with that, the mayor will kick off the festival. And he's just kind of addressing the crowd. He's saying, you know, and welcome everybody for joining us again this year for this year's uh, Lantern's Eve celebrations. Uh, we hope you've all brought your... Uh, most festive spirits and you've all made your lanterns in the past week I hope we have some extras for our guests today and uh, with that actually three kids run onto stage and shove a lantern in each of you guys' hands and it's just like a small cute little painted um, uh, paper lantern with like a candle in it I love you I will adopt you if your parents go missing (laughs) <laughs> That's creepy, miss. And leaves. <laughs> and uh, Mayor Royum has been continu- continuing to talk and says, um, and of course, to bring the extra dash of light to this year's festival, we have these wonderful three clerics of Paler with us today. If they would be so kind and step up and give us a small speech and a little blessing. And with that, all the attention goes to the three of you. Go ahead. Who wants to go first? <laughs> All right, I'll, I will immediately step up first. 
<laughs> you know, like it, yeah. if someone else was going to come up, I would cut in front of them. <laughs> yeah, Collie like, was about to go, yeah. and then it's just like, no. Darlings, darlings, lovely. And as I'm doing like blowing kisses to the audience, and I'm like throwing up the the flowers and the and the sparkles with my minor illusion. Like, thank you all for coming again together, showing us together that the light in our hearts, going outward, forth, into our lanterns, when we raise it above, we are showing that we are raising it above the darkness. We are greater than it, together, with the light of Pelor shining above. And I hold out the lantern, and then I do the light, and I, I'm assuming at this point I'm supposed to let it go, or is that it correct? Uh, as soon as everybody's spoken. You do it, and it's gone. <laughs> it's just gone. Yeah, yeah, I, like, let it go, and then I realize that no one else is going to do it, and so I catch it again. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, give me, give me a dex roll for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, anyway, uh, so the light, it starts going up, and I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well. And then I pretend, I just kind of, like, I commit to it, and I'm like, like throwing out the lights <laughs> all right uh -huh. um we as the clerics we as the clerics guiding you forth i can't okay. believe we got paid for this <laughs> uh going forward <laughs> a lone lantern is raising into the night sky would anybody else like to contribute to the speech or are you guys just gonna throw up your lanterns uh moss did you want to go Oh, I should mention the people are enamored by your speech. They're excited. Oh, it. Uh, I I think we should just agree. <laughs> I agree. And I let go of my lantern. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Collie's gonna try to stop the lantern from coming up. <laughs> like no, no, no. And I'm, I'm gonna be uh, like, no, don't make it. We were committed. <laughs> I rolled a 15. <laughs> to stop the lantern? Yeah. You managed to stop that lantern. It, it's funny because, like, Moss is so short where Kali just, like, puts an arm above it. <laughs> it just... yeah, yeah, like, a, like, like just, just one hand, just like a balloon, like, boom. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not doing that now. And the mayor kind of budges into it and says, oh, that's, just wait, don't release the lantern Yeah, yet. don't, don't, don't. don't. Uh, and then Kali kind of, like, goes forward and comes up to the stage and says, In light of this great festival, I would love to bless you all and hope for your new year to be full of light and good Paylor stuff. And if you don't believe in Paylor, let him come down and smite you from the inside out. <laughs> for he's a vengeful god. <laughs> from the inside out. So that your eyeballs will liquefy and your, your bowels will explode. <laughs> but if you believe in him, then you shall live in peace and prosperity. Uh, <laughs> Baylor, be praised. Be praised. You get people hyped up and excited in the first part, and then in the second part, they're all just kind of looking at each other, and eventually there's like a, a slow clap coming from the crowd. Like they think they should be clapping at this. All right, I think I did my job. <laughs> and then the mayor pipes up and says, well, before we release the lanterns, we would just like to give each of you a token of our appreciation. And the three kids that gave you the lanterns come back on stage, and... Um, they ask each of you to kneel. Oh. And they are uh, holding uh, what looks like a um, tree ornament, like a ball. Aww. And it's like in green in color on like a purple ribbon. And uh, it has some gold decoration on it. And they want to reward you with it. Aww. Aww. Do you all kneel down? Yeah, yeah. I um, uh, yeah, so I, take a, I do take a look at the... What do the decorations look like, specifically? Like... Uh, are there any engravings, or is it just sort of like stones and, and little beads and stuff? There's a skull crossbone. <laughs> Necromancy. <coming up. laughs> no, it looks like... Yeah, does it look like poison? It Do you have to like... put your little leaf over top? <laughs> <laughs> I just need ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like somebody gave a kid some glue and gold glitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank does it doesn't have very good resale value. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. This is more of a symbolic uh, value than a monetary value. 
Oh, okay. So it's it's worthless. No, <laughs> it's precious. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they they kind of put it on on each of you, um, or hand it to you if you prefer. Okay. So so when 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 the child brings the necklace down, um, I I I reach up and uh, touch one of their cheeks, and ba- I basically just cast guidance on. Okay. Them. What does that do? Um, it gives them advantage on ability checks. I think. Or it gives them an additional D four on their ability check. Yeah, yeah, not advantage. Yeah, it gives them. Yeah, it gives them another. Okay, D4. so it's like a little blessing. For yeah, them. but yeah, Aww. Aww. yeah, essentially, yeah, it's symbolic. I don't think that they're going to actually have to <laughs> make an ability <laughs> check. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, little do no. you know. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I guess the the kid kind of lights up a little bit and it's excited. It just got a blessing from an actual paler cleric and says, "Oh, th- thank you," and then like runs away with his friends giggling. At this point, what I would actually like to do is um, once once I kind of like settle down or something, I might actually try and do this thing where I make a duplicate image. I do the invoke duplicity, make the duplicate, and then I would actually bow off of the stage to go look around. <laughs> okay. Uh, what a good use. Yeah, and so and basically I'm kind of going to be looking around through the crowd uh, to try and get some investigation, like see if anyone is watching... Um, not watching us, but watching the crowd from the outside or something. Okay, sure. You hop off stage while everybody else is still kind of engaged in the um, the speeches and such, and um, you go around the crowd. And um, I guess that would be another um, investigation. I think it would be investigation or perception at that point. Okay, um, investigation. Yeah. Okay, that is a six. Okay. <laughs> you see. Maybe a guy that's drunk a little bit too much wine, but aside from that, everybody seems to be pretty, pretty into the celebrations. Nobody's off in the corner, awkwardly staring at this crowd. Okay, so once again, I'm kind of be slunk amongst them, kind of looking around, and that's going to be where I am for now. For sure. With that, the mayor says uh, on stage, and now is the moment we've all been waiting for, the lighting up of our small little town. And you see... When he says that, the, all the crowd um, make sure their lanterns are lit and ready. The mayor does a little three, two, one countdown. And as soon as he finishes, everybody throws their lanterns up into the sky. So what's our position to the tree? Because the tree at the center of the crowd um, or behind us? I know, I know you said before, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So massive tree is behind you. You're on the stage facing the crowd. Okay. Makes sense? Yes, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I release my my lantern, but I keep an eye at the crowd for sure. Oh, I would I would also give um, uh, Moss uh, the blessing of the trickster, so that's advantage on stealth checks for one hour. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I I will say before you decide on me, I. <laughs> I do, I, well, I, I'm in heavy armor. No, because that would, yeah, so it negates your... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it balances it out. Uh, honestly, yeah. the thing is, I have to give the blessing to one of you two, and I don't think Callie's going to try and be sneaky. Your character is trying to be sneaky on a, on and off, so... That's true. <laughs> so the lanterns have all risen up in the sky, and with that, actually, the lanterns of the town all, are also lit up, and the entire place is illuminated quite brightly. It's really... For a cleric of Paylor, this is a beautiful sight to see. I'm in awe. I am not even. I'm not even looking up at the um, lights because I'm. I'm just watching the crowd, just like a hawk, just thinking like, okay, if they're gonna be making their move, any yeah. any minute now. <laughs> uh, what about uh, Geldmas? Are you watching like the festivities? Are you focusing on the crowd? What are you doing? Um, I think uh, he's probably he's looking he's looking around at the crowd. <laughs> Like, like giving hand hand signals to uh, Zayfor. Zebo. Oh, Sorry, Zebo. Zebo. And I'm I'm kind of giving like the I don't see anything like kind of the swish swish with around the neck or something like that. Like nothing. I'm getting nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Kali, what are you up to? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure Kali's actually going to be looking around too. I think she'll be on guard. For sure, mm-hmm. and she might even pull out her morning star, just like just like casually on her hand, mm-hmm. and just mm-hmm. like, yep, yeah, festive, and <laughs> and just look around. For sure. Well, as soon as the lanterns are released, 
the crowd and everybody there bolts. Everybody is running away as fast as they can. Uh, they're in the, like, isn't Zebo in the All crowd? Right. Yes, Zebo's in the crowd. You're going to have right. to uh, do give me a little dexterity to see if you can uh, not get trampled. That is going to be a 21. Okay. Um, with a 21, I'll give you the choice. Do you want to jump on top of people's shoulders, or do you just want to run out of the way? <laughs> uh, I am actually going to, if there's like a building... Yeah. Um, I'm going to slight. I'm actually going to try and climb on top of that if I can, and just kind of like hide behind a chimney. Okay. Damn. Um, are you going to just like climb like a monkey on that is building? That acrobatics, I'm guessing. Oh, acrobatics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Anyway, oh. it's a five. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay. So this the the scatter pattern. Does it look like are they afraid or is it like yeah, like this is part of the festivities that we all run in opposite directions. <laughs> Okay. Away, away from the festive tree. I guess that would be a. Um, I guess it's a wisdom for everybody. Wisdom roll. Okay. In- Interpret insight, this. I think insight is reading insight? people. Okay, do insight. Okay. Sorry, I'm still getting the hang of these five e skills. Yeah, they're so nicely condensed, though. They are. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so seventeen. Uh, mine is okay. It's a crit. It's a crit. Oh. I can give you that roll twenty link. <laughs> No, you don't you have to. It. It's okay. It's all good. We trust. Uh, you pull out your webcam, plug it in, take a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the uh, the one thing, the the question that I'm 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 thinking immediately is: Are they all running away from the stage, or are all are they all running back to their houses, away from the center of the crowd? Everybody is immediately running to their houses, as if on cue. Okay. I'm going to spin around and look at the tree. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's nothing at the tree. The tree is regular. Nothing is behind you in general. The tree was freaking me out. Okay. I got a 13. Uh, Okay. Uh, You'd all come to that same conclusion. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's weird. It's like (laughs) they're running to the houses as if on cue. Uh, Some of them are a little bit freaked out. And it only takes about, what, maybe 30 seconds. And this town is just like empty of people. What about the mayor? Mayor's gone too. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it is now just the three of you in this town plaza. Well, I mean, that's a very interesting festive ending. Right? I feel like they would have warned us about this if they weren't... It... I, I would actually... At that, I would dispel the, the, the trickster thing, and then I would come over and I'd be like, "That's that was weird. Why didn't they tell us about that? <laughs> Give me perception. Perception. Okay, I'm going to physical roll. Okay, not that great. It's uh, 15. Okay. 18. Mm-hmm. 11. Okay. Um, yeah, all of you would see it. Um, where the crowd once was, now sits a regular plain black cat with emerald green eyes and it's just staring at you curiously. Kitty! Oh! (laughs) Kitty! Hello! (laughs) That's not suspicious. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so uh, basically uh, I'm gonna just get charm animals and plants locked and loaded. (laughs) 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 Right? <laughs> you pull out your staff and you're like, ch- you load in the um, charm animals. Yeah. Ch- ch- it, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just like ch- ch- and cast shillelagh so like a vine, a vine grows around it, and then cautiously hop off the stage and start walking towards the cat. All right. I will do so as well. Sure. The cat just kind of sitting there, and it's doing what cats do. You know, they kind of just stare around. It's- moving its tail a little bit to the side. It's just sitting there. It's looking at you, up the three of you. Actually, okay. as they are doing that, I am actually going to be trying to cover the perimeter just in terms of, like, looking around. Like, is anyone watching us? Is someone, you know, anyone spying on us? Um, okay, perception. Okay. And just, are there any other footsteps going around through the streets? For sure. Okay. That is going to be 19. Uh, with the 19, you would see that it's absolutely empty of all people. Um, there's maybe... Like, maybe a couple people at their windows, but even then, most people turned off their lights in their houses. Oh, they even turn off the lights, okay. 
and um, all the footsteps lead away from the plaza and I guess with a 19 you may see the cat's footsteps leading into the plaza. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm going to need 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, um, uh, if, if, so c- just consider me like casting a ritual for the next mi- 10 minutes. I will speak to the animal. All right. Okay. I want to approach the cat then while you do that. All right. So Geldmas has begun his ritual and you approach the cat, Kali. Yeah. I want to kneel down to it and go, uh, he- hello, little, little fella. And then I kind of like cautiously like tilt my head at it mm-hmm. and just like, what are you doing here? Were you, did you make everybody run away? The I cat wanna, just kind of looks at you curiously. I want to kind of pet it. <laughs> Collie wants to pet it. And as you go to pet it, it says, Yes, they typically leave every year like this. I'm assuming you must be my sacrifices this year. Uh, and this is the cat talking, I'll just clarify. I, I turn to Moss, I'm like, I don't think you need to do that ritual. Yeah, like he, he, he stops <laughs> midway. Like you just hear the maraca like shake one last time. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. Sac, 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 sac. Did someone sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I do believe you must be my sacrifices. You do wear the sacrificial pendants. I am assuming this would be the three of you. This thing covered in glitter and glue? That would be it, quite. Yes. Ooh, a cat. We're really afraid of a cat. Well, you are talking. It is so. talking. I didn't finish the spell. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I, I kind of like stand up and tower over this cat and put my hands on my sides and go like, well, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but you are a cat. And I pull out my morning star and I do have a very big spiky stick that I can kill you with. So I really do not feel in the festive mood to kill a cat today, but if I need to, I guess I like turn the Zebo and I'm like, I guess this is, that could happen today, I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe he, maybe he needs to be trained. Like maybe we could just train him and be like, hey, you don't eat people not, and then- Yeah, not to sacrifice. Look, he's a cat, okay? You know, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're doing. You know, it's all about the owners. Like, if a cat scratches you, it's the owner's fault. You know, I, I don't, I don't know about that. I, 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 I would say that pound for pound, they are some of the fiercest predators in the wild. Okay, all right. That is, you know what? Look at his little kitty paws. Uh, so I, I, I'm gonna give you guys a hot take, which is, I think maybe. These are wicked people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and my character's already come to that conclusion. It's like, hmm, you don't say. <laughs> well, Kali's just like, no, no, I, I refuse. <laughs> that is that is simply part one. Part two is that as they are wicked people and the light of Pelor need not shine on them, we have no uh, 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 responsibility to protect them from whatever this creature is. I mean, that is that is pretty... Yeah, you're right. Um, Responsibilities would be the last thing for you to worry about. I'd rather worry about your survival, don't you think? No, I, I believe you can probably find much better sacrifices than us. And he takes, the, he takes the golden thing, the golden necklace, and throws it on the ground. As you grab it, you notice it tightens around your neck. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> ha! It's basically like a collar now. Oh, that that I'm is not, not that. good. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I'm, I'm I'm very much a lady of paler or not in the back. Um. <laughs> so shall we begin the games then? I suppose you'd like to run away or something. Try to fight me. Like, let's get on with it. I'm really bored. Oh, run away. You th- you'd think we'd really run away. And as he does that, I do the invoke duplicity and pretend like my guy's there. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like kind of trying to get a little bit of distance. <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely like staring down this cat and I'm like, 
you know I do still have a big, pointy, heavy stick, right? Like, I can smash you. Go ahead. If you're so inclined. I really don't want to kill a cat today, but I guess this is just the mood I'm in, and I'm going to try to attack it. Go ahead. Uh, I got a 14. Mm -hmm. You hit it. Deal damage. Oh, shit. Smack it with my stick. Uh, that is 10 points of damage. All right. It's dead now. It's just a really cocky cat. <laughs> Smack this cat, and it... It's just squish. It just like completely smushes under your mane. Ah! And you've killed the cat. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, you killed the cat? <laughs> oh my god. I, I was like, so I didn't, I I didn't mean... think you'd actually do that. Why just why would you do that to a it's cat? It's a gory sight. Oh, oh my god. That was deeply disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I didn't I kinda like look at my maze and it's just covered in cat guts and I'm yeah. like, oh no, this is gonna take forever to get up. Oh my god, I just killed a cat. Why oh, did you God. do that? Oh, I kind of like, I turned to Moss and I'm like, don't, don't hate me. <laughs> I, I don't. Is that all you've got? That was really a weak blow, I would say. And the cat's standing there again. What? Above its corpse. It's just another cat. Oh, I'm... It looks exactly the same, though. Uh... Guys, it came back. I suppose it's my turn now, wouldn't you say? Nah. And uh, you notice that its eyes, they light up ever so slightly. And you all begin shrinking and shrink and I shrink. I knew it. Until the three of you are mouse-sized. I knew it. <laughs> How did you know? Th did you know we were going to interact with a cat and then I'd kill the cat and then the cat comes back and now we're tiny again? Because I didn't see that coming. No. I... I knew, I knew that the pound for pound... It's the, it's the oldest trick in the book, Kelly. The pound for pound thing would come back and haunt me. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? They're, they're, they're the scariest predators, pound for pound in nature. <laughs> Shut up, Mawson. It's not helping us. I, like, slowly turn to Zebo. Are you getting um, all this too, Zebo? <laughs> um... So the thing is that I don't know if it actually worked. I did actually try to have the duplicate and kind of move away. So he's probably shrunk, but I don't know if he believes the duplicate is an illusion or not. Um, mm, that's true. What if he thinks that he's a twin? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, as as far as I know, uh, with the duplicate, it is identical. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it is identical. So the only way to usually tell is just through reasoning. Right. Like, then, there's um, two of them now. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think the cat might be suspicious that there's two, but it wouldn't know which one is the real one. Okay. Right. I actually rolled on my own here, and he rolled terrible, so um, cat okay, believes right. it's real. <laughs> all right. Zebo <Zeebo> two. Cool. <laughs> we got Zebo one, Zebo two. <laughs> all right. Uh, why don't we do initiatives at this point? Kali, what you got? Oh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ten. Okay, Zebo. Um, uh, I crit with a twenty-three. Damn. All right, Geldmoss. Uh, I probably not. Oh, twenty. Okay, okay. That, that's pretty great. And Encounter gets a twenty-two. Uh, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, with a crit on initiative and five E, I'm assuming it works the way that you get a bonus round. Um. I don't think so. Uh, Norm, no. So actually, technically, only you, you only crit on an attack, so... Okay. Um, oh, okay. In that yeah. case, you go first. Okay. Uh, I am going to fire a guiding bolt at, up his ass, and I'm going to use it with... I'm going to have the illusion fire the spell. Okay. So that is going to be a, um, a 25 to hit. Or, sorry, 21 to hit. You hit it. Okay. With the guiding bolt, and it's going to shoot it for um, 10 radiant damage. Okay, the cat bursts into holy flames, and okay. moments after, it emerges from the shadow of its corpse. Nice right. one. Well then. But I believe now it's my turn. And the cat um, goes to attack Kali. Kali does a 10 hit you. No. Okay. Uh, it just swipes at you and misses. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Oh, and I will just clarify, I know you all shrunk down, but we're gonna keep weapon damages and damage sizes, everything the same. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You're just, just, just gonna treat the yep. cat as giant? Absolutely. <laughs> nice. um, okay, cat just misses. It's not, maybe its spirit isn't quite in the fight yet. Geldmoss, it's your turn. Um, uh, Geldmoss uh, looks at the cat and says, that's two down. Um, and <laughs> I think the, the first thing that he would do would be cast Shield of Faith on Kali. Okay, cool. Uh, which basically just gives her a plus two to AC. Ah, good. Cool. Okay, so I'll write that down. Okay, cool. Um, and he is going to move away. <laughs> 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 like just Shield of Faith and then 25 feet of just running. All right, Kali, it's your turn. All right. Now, I know I smashed you, and I still have your tiny guts on my smashing stick. Um, but maybe we could, like, not do this, and you could just let us go. Because, you know, obviously this town is full of other people, and like like Moss said, doesn't seem like they're, they're really great. Though, I'm still a little... I'm a little bummed, to be honest, that they kind of, like, threw us under the bus. So, you know, why don't you just go and we'll leave and pale or bless you? No, that's not quite how this works. Either I kill all of you as my sacrifices or I kill the rest of the town. And that's quite a lot of work, so I'd rather stick with you right now. Uh, no, I can see why that would be a hassle. All right, you know... I'm smashing a cat today. <laughs> I'm gonna attack and I'm going to swing at his legs. Alright. I only got a 10. Okay. Uh, you don't hit. Aw, okay. I swing and I miss. I think that war clerics get two attacks at level three. Maybe it's through channel divinity or something. Well, I yeah. do, but I only get it d- twice. In the oh, game. yeah, equal to her wisdom mod. Okay. So I have to, like, okay. choose. Pick and choose. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you actually manage to strike its leg, but it's just, it's like a, you don't penetrate through it. It's just too hard. It's, it's vast natural armor. It's just too much for you, apparently. Um, Zebo. Mm. Uh, I am going to fire a sacred flame at it, so it's going to have to give me a dex save. Okay. Uh, for the deck save, it gets a 19. 19 is a success, so it takes no damage as the fire just, like, passes as Whoop. it dodges out of the way. Okay. Uh, it's its turn. It's going to try to attack Holly again. Uh, it's going to try to swipe at you again. Oh, just kind of like a cat batting at, at its toy. <laughs> okay, it uh, crit fails. <laughs> um, you know what it does? It's like... You know when a cat is like playing with its toy and then it gets distracted and just kind of flops to its side and it's just kind of batting at nothing? <laughs> the, the cat is now prone for a round as it's like distracted with its own tail. And exposes its belly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just boom as it hits the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Galdmas, it's your turn. Um, oh, Lord. I, I, I look around. Is there anything else going on, or is it just basic? We're basically on the snow, and there's just this animal. Um, there's actually something else going on. There what? is a small person that is the same size as you guys, running at you from like a side of the plaza. Okay. Is it? Does, does it look like it might be a broad bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, their bottom is not broad, but uh, it seems to be a lady running at you. Oh, okay. She's still pretty far away. Would, would I be able to do an insight to think like, okay, is this person like threat? Like, do they have a weapon out and are coming <laughs> towards us? Or are they sure, do an uh, insight. running towards us? Like, ah, like waving their hands. Go ahead. Okay. That is going to be a 21. They are waving their hands at you in a kind of panic to get your attention. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, <laughs> I'm gonna use thaumaturgy to just like amp my voice up uh, an extra couple decibels and just go like, should we not be attacking the cat? Cat. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you just hear a tiny voice from the distance saying, Run away! Get over here! Get out of there! You're crazy! <laughs> okay, and I use my movement to run towards them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um... Uh, and sorry, as uh, as that happens, I do I do say, they say run, and, and then start running. Okay, cool. Kali, uh, you've heard your ally call out to you. The cat is currently playing with itself. Okay. I mean, Kali's like, I have to fight the urge not to r- just go and ruffle that fur. It's so adorable. Oh god. Um. Uh. Yeah, I, I book it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna run. Sure, you book it, Zebo. Um, I am going to um, I'm gonna be running with them, uh, but I am going to uh, have my my illusion going off in a different direction, and I'll make another minor illusion of like Callie running off in a different way to sure. try and confuse the cat. Um, and on its turn, I'm gonna see if it can tell apart the illusions. Okay, it managed to tell both of them apart, and it's kind of okay. It got up and is now running towards the group. Oh god. Okay. And it is going to try to pounce on It's going to pounce on Zebo. Okay. Every time I hear Zebo, I think you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh no, okay. <laughs> uh, it's trying to pounce on you with a 14. 16 AC. What okay. was the number? 14. So Okay, it does miss. Yeah, it misses you barely, but you can you just feel that to you massive weight of a cat slam down right yeah. beside you and with you now is an NPC that you've all run to and uh, it's a it's a human she's um, she took like blonde hair normal build and she says um, that I think we should all get the hell out of here now what are you guys doing <laughs> trying to fight it um, and, and I, I just say what is its name as I'm running. <laughs> the cat? Yes, what is its name? It's I don't clearly know. some old god. I don't know what that thing is called. It's, I don't know. I just know it's big and it's evil and it's fluffy. Is it really important right now? I, I, I yell back, what is your name? <laughs> I am. As we're running away, I'm going to look back at the cat and I'm going to try and command it and say, flee or run. Okay. Oh, nice. To force it to run away from us. So it is going to have to give me a wisdom save. A wisdom save. It got a 13. 13. My save is a 13, so it succeeds. Oh. Damn. Damn. So I, but anyway, I'm trying to have a conversation with, um, with the NPC. It's like, how do we kill it? Uh, I've uh, killed it a couple I, times. I don't know. I've, Look, I've I mean, kill, tried. kill, like actual kill. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew, I would have killed it by now. Have you been running for a year? Are, are you Hyain Broadbottom? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jane. I think he means Jane. How did you... Yes, I'm Jane. How did you know that? Well, we talked to your daughter and she's super sweet and cute. <gasps> and she kind of made it a bummer <laughs> that you guys were gone, but, you know. Yeah, I'm... I'm the, I was the only survivor from last year. What about your husband? He got eaten. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. And now's not the time for sentiments. So have you, have you just been have you just been living as a small uh, person, like kind of house to house for the past year? Uh, no, I was imprisoned in the mayor's house. I just managed to break out today because I didn't want somebody else to get sacrificed. Well, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, this is all your fault. You're still alive, aren't you? <laughs> she, she's got you there. Now listen, we gotta get to the mayor's house or we're gonna die out here. That seems like a terrible idea. You said you were trapped there for a year. <laughs> but we're not running into the cage. Does the mayor have a way to get us to normal size? She says, the mayor is holding some kind of artifact. It seems to have something to do with the cat. Maybe we can do something with it. I just, I know where it is. I found out. I think this is the only thing I can think of to defeat this cat. Because it keeps coming back if you try to do anything to I- it. Oh, I should I should do this. Uh, I'm going to cast uh, Pass Without a Trace on our group. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. well, you're making it almost to the house, but I'll probably give the cat one more attempt to catch one of you. Uh, sorry, I, f- I lost the encounter where we were at. Uh, 
happy about uh, Okay, we we ended at uh, I, me I, I took like dashing. three turns in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended at me dashing. Then, uh, then we sort of fell out of order for a second. So I think it's Kali. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kali. Then I had Kali, I had done like command, and then I'd gotten attacked, and then I had I forget tried to do the illusions. <laughs> yeah. Tap danced a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Is this thing behind us? Oh yeah. It's giving chase. Okay, I'm gonna throw a hand axe. It's doing that wiggle, that cat wiggle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm throwing my hand axe. Okay. Right at the butt wiggle. At its face. You know you're fucked when you got the butt wiggle. (laughs) (laughs) Oh god, he got the butt wiggle. Uh, You learn to fear the butt wiggle. So, 14. 14? Yeah. Throw your hand axe. Yeah. You throw it, but it does not penetrate. Hmm. So it bounces off the cat. No, my favorite axe. (laughs) And why'd you throw it? I think we're gonna die. The butt wiggle. <laughs> okay, uh, the Zebo's turn next, but you had like three in a row, so I'm, yeah, I'll yeah, skip correct. you on this one and I'll go to the cat. It's gonna pounce on Kali. Yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> and I got a 27. Jesus! Oh, f- that Ooh. is a hit. Fuck. Yeah. I think it hits you. Maybe. Yeah. That- <laughs> That hits. Mm, I don't know, but you're gonna have to check. Let me run the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it hits me. All right, all right, all right. This thing pounces on you, dealing six points of damage. Go on without me! <laughs> and then give me okay. an acrobatic. <laughs> don't actually go out! Sorry, uh, go without me! Okay! <laughs> give me an acrobatics or athletics as it's gonna try to hold on to you. Oh no. <laughs> what you get? Seven. You, you got a seven? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. It uh, grapples you. God damn. So it's it's like jumped on you with its claws and just kind of pinned you to the ground in front of it. Hey, why don't we talk about this? I mean, I probably don't taste good. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna spare the dying on her. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, she. Yeah. She only took six, I thought. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, that's the joke. Oh. Is like she's already dead. I'm just gonna do it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> all right, Gelmas, it's your turn. Uh, all right, so uh, he he like he spit like stops, sort of slide spins back, puts forth one hand, and then uh, oh god, what is it? Waves uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be, yeah, it just waves goodbye, and that's the that's the end of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and and just says Tefos, and uh, basically healing words you, and then uses the his movement to run. Oh, okay. Um, uh, All right, I feel better before I die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so your yeah, your wounds stitch themselves up a little bit. Seven HP. Oh, yeah. We are a team of clerics. No one can kill us. <laughs> Apparently. Well, mm, uh, you know, don't jinx it. <laughs> well, yeah, it, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Kali, it's your turn. Um, okay. Can I try to, like, escape? You can do a, uh, a post grapple. Yeah. Try to get out. Alright. Um, That's better. Do, does anybody have Bless? Uh, yes, I have Bless. Hmm. hmm. What did you get for your grapple? <laughs> uh, I got. 21. Okay, wow, you actually managed to wriggle out of it somehow. Ah! <laughs> I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out! I'm so out! <laughs> <laughs> and you run away? Yeah! I'm getting the fuck out of here! Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that an attack of opportunity? Uh... Uh, she would have to... Oh, yeah, because the thing is she would have to disengage first, yeah. but she can't because she used her action to get out of there, exactly. so that would, in fact, be it. So, I'm just gonna take this... It got 24. Oh, okay, yeah, that fucking hit me. Okay, and it's just swiping at you. And deals you eight points of damage. Ow, my back. Kind of launching you forward a little bit. Oh, no. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. It is Zebo's turn. Now, we'll say after this round, uh, this encounter round, you guys will have made it into the house. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so, um... You're almost there. Yeah, do we just want to, uh, do we see any kind of an entrance or anything over there that we're heading to that... Yes, you're heading to a mouse hole. Hmm, let me think. Um, 
At this, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have us like duck behind something and then do pass without a trace on the group to try and sneak around okay. and try and avoid the cat. So on my turn, I'm gonna continue running and then I'll, I will cast pass without a trace on the group. Okay. And I'll, oh yeah. I'll, what? Isn't it still active from before, or you just didn't do that? Because well, the, the thing is, before the problem is, I was I was saying like, oh, I'm going to cast this, but then I realized like, oh crap, I've taken like three turns in a row, and so <laughs> okay. I yeah. I said so we kind of ignored that one, and so this is the actual casting of it. Sure, great. Sure. Okay, you are passing without a trace, and I'm going to go into kind of an area and kind of try and hide and sneak. Okay, uh, well, the closest destination would be the house. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to head over to the house then. All right, cool. Yeah, and on the end of your turn, you will reach it. Okay. Um, the cat's turn. So the only people exposed are Kali, Geldmas, and Jane. Let's see which one's going to go for. It's going for Jane. Oh, crap. And... No! <laughs> fails to catch her. Good. Thank God. Ah, oh, good. Yeah. Um, He's our only NPC. We yeah. need her. It tried to pounce, but uh, I guess it misjudged. And with that, we're back to Geldmas. Okay, so does it look like Jane is going to have to disengage in order to... Like, will she be able to get to the house without taking an attack of opportunity? Yes. She will? She will. Oh, okay. Uh, then I just, I just... I, I just run after you know and, and jump jump in jump into that house. Absolutely, you make it. Yeah, <laughs> Kali, you're the last one. Uh, I mean, I have the urge to flip off the cat. Um. It's doing the wiggle again. <laughs> okay, I'm getting in the hole. <laughs> sure. And uh, with that, you've all made it into the house. And the cat is outside. It's like it's kind of reaching into the hole, okay. trying to reach for you guys. But um, mm-hmm. you've, you, like, I won't even make you roll. It's easy to dodge. Because it's a big fucking... Yeah, and you've yeah. already made it through. All right. And after you've made it through the mouse hole, you are standing in a kitchen where it smells like delicious holiday dinner. So cool. we should try to get these things off of our necks, right? I turn to Jane. Does she have one on too? Yep. Hmm. Well, if you find out how, tell me, because I really don't know how to get these off. It seems like it gets tighter every time I yank on it. What about crushing the ball? You trying to do oh, that? I mean, I tried. Damn glitter and glue. It's tough as nails. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, I, I, has Heldmoss, like, heard anything? Like, he, he's kind of an academic. Right. Um, and so... I wonder if either through religion or history, he would have heard anything about some kind of a weird like cat that takes sacrifices. Sure. Uh, Give me either one, your preference. Okay. Don't be a failure, please. Uh, Oh, that's not very good. It's a 10 religion. Uh, With a 10, you have not heard of it. I mean, it sounds like a cat that just eats people, so <laughs> I don't I, think we need to know too much about it, other than maybe trying to avoid it. <laughs> I, I ask, I asked Jane about uh, what, where's the artifact? Because I think maybe that might be our first order of business is finding the artifact. Yes, um, I found the artifact in the bedroom. He has it locked up in a small case in there. Okay, what does it look like? It just looks like. <laughs> I mean, it sounds gonna sound stupid, but it literally looks like a green ball of yarn. Uh, but it's like does sound it's, very it's like stupid. glowing, and whenever he touches it, he starts glowing. So I'm assuming that's it. Okay. Okay. Is have you ever seen him and the cat in the same place at once? No. <laughs> Whoa. I've not seen them together. In fact, it seems to be avoiding it. He ran off like everybody else when the cat showed up. Hmm. Did he? Yeah, that's true. Did he? By the way, don't trust the mayor. If he told you anything like that, that guy is... He's bad news. Oh, hmm. I haven't put that together yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> when did th- this tradition, this festival start? He's just going to go through his same exact questions. <laughs> with All that right, bullshit. Moss, I think we got him. <laughs> well, the festival started like many years ago, but the sacrifice is only for the past three. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Moss throws the monocle on the ground and stomps on it. 
Okay. Um, like, why'd you do that? Poison to monocle. No. Actually, we were kind of correct. It's like, it was a cursed item. <laughs> yeah. I, I am going to talk to Jane and ask her, like, were you are you a worshiper of Paylor at all? Like, I, mm-hmm. I worship Paylor. Are you a religious? Are you a cleric at all? Or Well, I'm not a cleric. I'm just a... Okay. Just a housewife, but uh, I do worship Paylor, and I go to pray every Sunday. Well, I used to until I got locked up. Pray Paylor, mm-hmm. but uh, seems like we're in quite a quite a stick pickle. Um, so then, if we get to his bedroom and find this kind of relic of yarn, uh, what are we supposed to do with it? We're not exactly, you know, our size, so we're kind of tiny. I mean, I guess we could roll it. But if it's in a box, I mean, that's going to be an issue. And I, I, I'm just as know. strong as a normal person, but I, now I'm tiny, so. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Let's hope you can figure that out. You seem like a capable bunch. Well, thank you. Ah, we are capable. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, 60%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if anything, it seems like the mayor's been trying to avoid the cat. It's definitely kept that, that ball of yarn away from it. If they're not the same person. I didn't think of it that way. Oh, the mayor has actually kept the ball of yarn away from the cat? Well, he's been keeping it to himself. I mean, I've, I've been I've been able to observe him from my cage, and it's just, mm. he keeps it locked up, keeps it away from everybody. Why were you in the cage? What exactly does it do with you? Like, does he just like looking at tiny people or something and just like do my tiny chores? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if it's some sick obsession or something. I've I've literally been living in a bird cage. Do you get like people sized food or is it tiny food? Okay, look, we're done. All right, let's move on. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm very interested by this. I, I'd rather not talk about it. Yes. <laughs> Where do you go to the bathroom? No, let's really drill into these details. <laughs> um. Anyway, she's traumatized, I... and then I start. I start kind of like uh, trying to um, like calm her down. Like, don't worry, we're here for you. And then like, um, like, don't worry, I'll keep you safe. <laughs> As you're like tiny, and she's like so much yeah. taller, and yeah. Okay, that's um, thanks. That's reassuring. Is it though? <laughs> Yes, it is. Shut up, Callie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if we're going to go to the bedroom, to his bedroom, we need to get through this kitchen, through the living room, and then we need to get up to his room. All right, okay. It's upstairs. Oh, great. And of course it's upstairs. Yeah. I can only assume the worst if he spots us, so we better stay hidden. Oh, great. I, like, look at my chain mail. Oh, yeah, this is going to be great. Well, I mean, frankly, I... I and he he uh, he stomps his foot down and like hears almost no sound whatsoever and is like, "We're we're pretty stealthy." Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and as you say that, a woman walks into the kitchen. She seems to be a maid of the house, and uh, is just working away and cooking. So if you're gonna sneak through the kitchen, you might have to avoid her. Okay. okay. Uh, also, everyone everyone has passed without trace. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I stick within 30 feet of you, dude. <laughs> okay, and also, uh, with the blessing, I am going to put it onto Z's character. So he has the blessing of the trickster as well. All right. Nice. So it's just one roll. Okay, so in front of you, as I said, is a kitchen. Um, there's just uh, there's countertops, like, all the way around. There's a table in the middle where this lady is, like, chopping up some veggies. Um you can try to stay under the countertops, but you can see what look like rather large um, rodent droppings. Uh, or you can try to just go over the floor where you may have to hide from this lady. I think probably being on the floor is our best bet because then we don't have to climb up or climb down. It's just like um, you don't have to worry about verticality. Oh. Plus we can hide under stuff. Well, I think he's also uh, talking that you can go underneath under, the cabinets. Yeah, un- you can go under the mm. cabinets where the droppings are, or you can go like in the exposed area where the maid is. So you can kind of choose your hazard. Yeah. Rodent droppings. Rodent droppings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, no, yes. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, Moss. I think this seems kind of up your alley with giant yes. creatures. Geldmoss couldn't be more excited. He he inspects the rodent droppings. 
Uh, okay. Oh, don't touch it. Oh, no. Are you touching it? Quick lick. Don't touch it, please. Oh. Okay. Takes a few licks just to make absolutely sure he knows what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm mostly dumped into survival, but I can do nature, too. Uh, you tell me which one is more applicable here. I think nature is more applicable because nature is like what you know and survival is like how to survive in the wild. And I don't think you need to know how to identify <laughs> rodent, yeah. like specific rodents. <laughs> Do nature. <laughs> oh, it is a crit. Nice. Okay. These are most certainly rat droppings and they are certainly fresh as they stick to your hand. Oh, you touched it. Okay. Me. They're fresh. That means that they're nearby. Uh. Um, and he like, he takes, he takes like a little... Oh, dude. They've they've eaten recently. <laughs> What's their diet? <laughs> mm, they're um, little berries. He uh, starts picking them out. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, We're going to save these for later. <laughs> it, I, I think this one ate maybe an entire carrot. Um, so he... Uh, how many does it look like there are? Looks like it's just one. Yes! My friends, we have hit the jackpot. I think I have found us a mount. Uh. And he like he points he points towards where, where he thinks the rat went. And um up ahead, uh under a few more cabinets, there's like a um area where there's a bunch of junk on the floor. That would be a prime rat hiding spot. So you wanna tame this thing and then we ride it. Uh Yes, he he gets his charm animals and plants locked and loaded. <laughs> chuck, 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 chuck. He like <laughs> loads that in. <laughs> every every time I say that, that means he casts shillelagh on his on his club. It extends a little bit, and then he cocks it. Uh, okay, and starts to slowly move towards uh, uh, where he thinks the rat probably is. Sure, I guess all of you are moving at the same rate. You all going together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're all okay. going together. I would like to also keep Jane, like, in the back, and I'll have her, like, like I'll be protecting her. Sure. Uh, she is unarmed, so, yeah, she will yeah. be protecting. You guys approach the kind of mound of rubbish where this rat is probably hiding under. And, in fact, as you approach, you do hear small rummaging coming from it. And after a moment, a rat peeks its head out and sniffing around curiously, and it looks over at a bunch of you. And then hisses aggressively. Uh, well, I think I like the cat better. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I present my red aquary of Paylor, and I, I say, In the name of Paylor, I command you to be my friend. That's the end of part one. Part two is up on Dingo's channel. I will put the link in the description and add an end card. You can click on it to follow them 